oh, how blessed I am. And oh, how happy I have come to this season. It has been a long, long road. And God has brought me through my life to the end of my life. That in these next few years, if there be a few years left, this could very well be my last Christmas. And I am so happy, oh so happy, to share this with you. That Jesus is coming very soon. That you don't have a lifetime left to wait. You won't have to spend 40 years as a Christian, as I have, looking for and longing for the soon return of the King. No, it's almost over. It's almost done. For you, this could be your last Christmas. And in very matter of fact, it's possible that in these next few years, the end of the age will have accomplished itself. And God will once again turn his eyes upon Israel and save the Jew as he begins to work through the prophets that he'll send, even as the false prophet will begin to prophesy and the Antichrist come on the scene. But tonight, what a celebration there is to know and to declare the coming again of Jesus Christ, which is what communion means. The fact of the realization of the Spirit of God taking us with him when he leaves this world behind. For us to be caught up into the air, to meet the Lord, and to evermore be with him. Oh my God, how happy that makes me to think of those things. For in these candles and in communion, in the bread and in the wine, in what they mean and how sublime it is and how simple that you could use Kool-Aid and crackers, you could use wine and matzah, you could use anything that comes from the bread of the earth or the fruit of the vine, or even turn water into wine. Because God respects and honors that which you're doing from the heart. Because the Jew knows it's a kavanah. It is the attitude of the heart that we reach out to God and we say, God, God, join us. Behold, thou hast prepared a table for me in the midst of mine enemies. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Behold, this is Jesus. And so I look forward to all the times and every time that I share the bread and share the wine. That daily I'm reminded to look to the heavens for Jesus is coming soon. That there's nothing left to be done. But God is restoring his right relationship with us. He is working in us both to do and to will of his good pleasure. He is accomplishing that which God had promised his son he would do. To fulfill the destiny of preparing a bride for his son. And that's you. And that's me. Behold. Look and see. Consider and be blessed. Enter into your rest. Enter into the place where God wants to bring you face to face with him. O oh, thou beloved of God, enjoy the time that you have left. For there's so little time, so few to be saved, that God himself has already declared and decreed those which yet remain may be wise or may be foolish. But you who have the Spirit of God, Dwell often in the promises of God. Find in the fulfillment of God your personal relationship and look up and enjoy the fullness of the heart of God reaching to you. That beats true because you love the brethren and you love your enemies. You don't despitefully hate those who despitefully use you, but rather you pray for those. You pray for everyone around you. You are the servants of God. You are the children of God. You are the light of the world. You become the salt of the earth. You don't take stands on false issues. You stand because you know Jesus. And you share the love that he has for the world. Oh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
that though they may not be taken in the rapture and may be left behind, they would still have eternal life because they would go into tribulation and God would save them if they have called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. But for us, oh God, what a way to declare the coming again of Jesus, but in the bread and the wine as he said to do. Because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Think of me every time when you take the bread and you drink the wine. Do this in remembrance of me. God, I remember and I observe. To remember, to observe, has not the Jew been told from the beginning of time? Was it not even in the garden to remember and observe these things that I command you this day? Oh, that we would follow Jesus today and to find in the midst of our lives the fulfillment of his spirit, the joy of the Lord that's our strength, the love of God that can shed abroad and cover the sins of many, that we would but exercise that gift of the spirit, that wellspring flowing out of us to all of the world to declare on this night of nights, in this way of ways, in the way that Jesus has given to us to remember him by. The love of God that said, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all men. Behold, for born unto you in this day in the city of David, a king, a savior, even Jesus, the Messiah, the savior of the world. For he shall save his people from their sins. Though your sins be as scarlet, oh, though they be red as crimson, I shall make them as white as snow. And behold, on the table that we look at, the bread and the wine, and how Jesus has done that in such a simple way. And yet it cost him his life for you. And yet it cost God his life to forgive you of your sin and mine. But looking again to that with which he's done, I can't help but think of what he's doing and what he's going to accomplish. Oh my God, making you perfect and making me in union and fellowship with God our Father, with knowing the Father intimately and personally in such an intimate way, in such a personal way, in such a holy way, that we would be one as the Spirit and the Son and the Father are one. Wow. Imagine that. We need do nothing more but to love, to have peace, and to have joy. And if anything you're doing stops that flow of love, that going forth with peace, that knowing the joy is your strength, then remove it from your life. And, oh God, I pray that now, even as we think of these things, if there be anything at all, any wicked way in me and any of those people that are watching, then God, remove it far from them as the east is from the west. And take them to the place where, yes, they will pass that test of being tempted by the enemy to be angry, to be violent, to be vicious, to be vengeful, to exercise their rights to try to be free when in reality in bondage. And the only freedom there is is in servitude to you, O God. Make it such that you would cause us to find in this, the bread and the wine, that God, you have set us free from our mind, from our hearts, from our own selfish will, from the way that we would go had we not known you, had we not found you, had we not loved you, and had you not chosen us. Oh God, thank you for choosing us and determining that we would inherit salvation. Oh God, what a miraculous story that you should die when you were born, that you should be born to die, that you should live so that we could have that assurance of the salvation that's come to us. Give us now your word, O oh Lord, I pray. And remind us of this day what you have done for us. Oh, Jesus, I pray, come and be with us tonight.
Be in our hearts and be in our minds and be in our, our soul and be in our emotions. And give us your word, oh Lord my God. If we live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. The fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. The fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. The fruit of the Spirit is goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is faith. The fruit of the Spirit is meekness. The fruit of the Spirit is temperance. Against such fruit and against such things, against the oil that the five wise have, oh, against such there is no law. And they that are in Jesus have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts thereof. If we live in the Spirit, then let us also walk in the Spirit. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus the Christ who also gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquities. Wow. Isn't that awesome? Think about that. Isn't that marvelous? Isn't that probably the greatest news you've ever heard? Not that God had given us glad tidings of great joy that the baby was born, but that God has chosen to reconcile us to himself, that he has chosen a way that we can come to know today that we are forgiven, that we are no longer living after the lusts of the world and the lusts of our flesh, but we have chosen to mortify the deeds that we've done in the past, that we might move forward in the Spirit and be found in the kingdom of God. I pray you may be so, for between you and the Lord, if you have anything between you and God you need to forgive, or be forgiven between you and any brother, then I pray God forgive you now, and God remove that from your life, even as I pray he does so for me. For if there is aught I have against my brother, or my brother has aught against me, then I would pray that God would reconcile me to them, even now as he forgives me of them. So I ask, O oh Jesus, that you would do so as our high priest, not after the order of Aaron, not after the Levitical priesthood, not after those things that condemn the flesh, but rather after the order of Melchizedek, after that order with which you are my high priest, that you seated at the right hand of the Father can speak to God for me, and that I am after that priesthood that has no beginning and has no end, and that that priesthood will always be full of love, full of peace, and full of joy, that I need not lift my hands as fists or protect myself in any matter, but that I would lay down my life, as you have said to do, to take up your life, that you would be, O oh God, the Son of God, who died for the sins of the world, and has come not to condemn the world, but that through you the world might be saved. And so, Father, I thank you for this night of communing, of communion of your spirit, of knowledge of your word, of allowing that godliness that God's fullness, that presence of the Spirit of God in our lives to come out of us, to unite us, to conform us, and to confirm us to being your sons and daughters, to being your children, to being your followers, to being your people. Make us one, oh Jesus, I pray, in this what you're doing for us tonight in communion. May it be so. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, we have, as it were, matzah. We have, as it were, 
Why? We have take this cup I'll fill for you and as you do remember This bread is my body. Broken for you. So take it. Eat it. Each time you do. Remember. Remember me. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Baruch Atah Adonai Echad Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu You've given us bread from the earth. You've given us bread from the earth. You've given us bread from the earth. Thank you. Thank you. Baruch atah Adonai lechem min haretz. Baruch atah Adonai lechem min haretz. Baruch atah Adonai lechem min haretz. We are told Jesus is the bread of life. He's the manna from heaven that came down. That should we eat of that flesh, we would never hunger again. Jesus is the bread of life. Without being so holy, you can be complete. Without being so perfect, you can be mature. Without being so righteous, you can be made of that righteousness of God by simply accepting what God has done for you. You don't have to deny yourself the communion of the fellowship of His Spirit or to take the bread and eat it. But you can receive it with gladness and joy and celebration of life if you would but simply come to the table that God has prepared for you. Accept the salvation that God has said for you. Allow the Spirit of God to do in you what He can do that you can't do for yourself, which is to be saved. Behold. Thank you. Oh, thank you, God. This cup is the covenant. I'm making with you, so take it, drink it, each time you do, remember me. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Baruch 
You've given us fruit from the earth. You've given us the fruit from the earth. You've given us fruit from the earth. God, we thank you. Baruch atah Adonai, bore pri agafen. Baruch atah Adonai, bore pri agafen. Baruch atah Adonai, bore pri agafen. Elohim. 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 And the water became wine, and the wine became blood, and the blood became our forgiveness. And it became the covenant that God has made with you, that he would forgive you, that he would remind himself to accept you, that he would inscribe you in the palm of his hand, that he would take your sins and blot them out, though they be as dark as a cloud, for the blood of the cross is what you share and celebrate when you do communion. For as often as you do these things in remembrance of Jesus, you do declaring his coming again in glory. But what cost him and what reminds us and what we should do often, more often than we ever do anything else, is the fact of this blood cleanses us from sin. It reminds us for the penalty that was paid was for us. We are redeemed. We are being filled now with that anointing oil, that fullness of the Spirit of God, that wise virgins, that we have that oil that we need in order to be accepted unto God. For when he comes and takes us home by his will and not our own, then he would remind us and say, you have done this to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me, you were faithful to do what I said, to do this in remembrance of me. One of the things I said to do, you have done. But remember the broken bread and how to crush the grapes of wine in order to bring about that which I did. For when I was hungry, you gave me to eat. Behold, the table of God is prepared before you in the midst of your enemies. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. Behold, the cup that God has prepared for us and given us of the cup of the covenant. When I was naked, you clothed me, and behold, the righteousness that God has prepared for us to be bathed in light. Enter into your rest. May it be this day, this last Christmas, you find yourself in your first and most powerful day from the rest of your life to go forward in the joy of the Lord, the might that he has given in peace. And the love that is overflowing that he wants to pour through you to the entire world for what little time we have left. Don't lose your salvation when so close you finish the course and run the race. But rather enter into your rest. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Come to the table and be made peaceful. Come to the table and have fullness of joy. Come to the table and receive mercy and grace. As Jesus said, come. For the Spirit and the Bride say come. The Father says come. And ye that are heavy laden, come. And ye that are burdened, come. And ye who are broken and meek and hurting and sorrowful and ready to perish, come. For I am meek and lowly. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And I will take you, and I will bear you as a mother bears a child. 
or as a shepherd bears a sheep. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. Come unto me now. Receive my love. Fill and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Go now and do what I told you to do. Be faithful to the end. And you shall receive your reward, and I will bring you unto myself. And I will love you, and you will enter into that place that I prepared for you. That time, that place, and that home that you have yet to see. Come. Come. Come.